Many people have learned how to apply a variety of textures and effects to layers to get them looking more realistic. I wanted to apply a pattern layer to turn this purple cloak into a Scottish tartan without changing the cloak at all. I'm not going to redraw it, I'm not going to repaint it, I'm just applying the pattern. But the biggest thing is, is I don't want it to look like just color. I want it to look like actual material. I hand drew the cloak using a custom brush. That will be a separate video, hopefully coming soon. I needed a cover really fast and the only images I really had was this one I had been working on. The novel is medieval Scotland, 14th century. And purple doesn't work for non-royalty. So I needed to change out this purple cloak to a tartan and that is also very easy to do. So let me show you how it's done real quickly. You want to make sure your clip art is the only image on the screen. Go up to select all. Then you're going to go to edit. Go down to define pattern. It's going to pop up this little dialog box. You name it, click OK, and you're done. That's all there's to it. Easy. Now let's go back to the photo manipulation. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here is turn off the embroidery layer. I work in groups. Adobe CC 2014 has made a lot of new changes to the groups, making them easier to use. So now that's basically all I work in is groups. I'm going to click off the eye on the group for the embroidery on the cloak. And what I want to do is change this purple cloak a bit more to red. But for you guys, so you can see it more easily on your screens, I'm going to do a simple levels adjustment and bring up the brightness. And oh my god, that looks terrible. Well, at least you guys can see the cloak. I actually have this cloak on three different layers. Two are in front of the actual photo, and one is in the back. And that's to make sure I don't have any holes showing through. As you can see here, lots of holes. So let me turn that layer back on. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go up here to Hue, Saturation, and Lightness Adjustments. And I'm going to fiddle with the color and turn it more towards red. There are two ways to get to the Hue, Saturation, and Lightness. Any adjustments are in the Adjustments panel up here at the top. And the other way, let me undo and I'll show you that one. Click on the black and white circle and go to Hue, Saturation and Lightness and it will put on a layer for you. Now the next thing we need to do is make this a clipping mask so it doesn't change our entire image. We only want it to change the color of the cloak, not everything else. You can hover your cursor over the line of the layer and when it changes to this little arrow and a box, hit Alt and click on the line and it will change that layer into a clipping mask. Or you can go to the actual flyout menu and down there at the bottom is the same icon that you saw your mouse turn into. You can click that and it will turn it into a clipping mask. But this way you don't change the entire image. You just want to change the cloak. Now, to actually change the color, I'm going to have to kind of hop around here because I've got this layers adjustment on for you guys so it brightened the image so you guys could see it. You want to hit colorize and change your sliders until you get the color you want. Notice the bottom slider 
is reflecting the actual color that the image is turning into. Try a small section if you have multiple layers. That way you won't be chasing your own tail trying to figure out exactly what you want. Just do one, get it right, and then duplicate the layer. Now that I'm happy with that, we'll go on down the road. Generally, it's going to be faster and easier for you just to duplicate the layer, or if they're grouped, you can put the clipping mask on the group itself and work it that way. And just for fun, here's what happens when you don't create the clipping mask. But don't worry, no permanent damage done. Just make it into a clipping mask and you're good to go. Highlights and shadows are important to this effect. You need good contrast. Up next now, we'll do the pattern layer. Okay, now we create the pattern layer. Go up to Layer, New Fill Layer, Pattern. Whoa, what happened there? Not to worry at all, all you've got to do is make a clipping mask out of this layer too just like we did with the Hue, Saturation, and Lightness Adjustments layer. As you can see, it's a lot better, but it still didn't solve the problem. Go over to your Layers panel and, and pull down the menu for your Blending modes. Modes like Overlay, Multiply might work, but try different ones. For this one, Hue worked the best for me. Let me zoom in here and you can see what I'm talking about. It's actually forming to the cloak itself. Selecting the right blending mode will help that become more convincing. Now up here on the shoulder, if you look closely, I'm actually losing the green coloring. Why is that? Well, if you look at the layers above, it's because of some shading I've got going. The shading is actually knocking out the green color. When I turn that off, the color comes back. That means the shading is too dark to let the color show through. So what I'm going to do is use a layer mask on it. Now, since most of you aren't going to be starting projects right smack in the middle like I did, let me start from the beginning on this. What you want to do is add a new layer, get the soft round brush, and reduce your opacity to probably in the 20s, 15, 20%. Give that a try. What you're going to do is start shading in the creases of the cloak. That adds a ton of realism to the pattern overlay. When you're working on your shading layer and you make a mistake, your best bet probably isn't to erase it. Use a layer mask because if you go too far with erasing, you can screw up your entire shading layer that you worked so hard on. At least a layer mask, it's still there. You didn't destroy it. It's non-destructive. The next thing you want to do after shading is add a layer mask to the pattern fill layer. This will allow you to block out the rest of the pattern fill and make it look even more realistic. And by the way, we're doing the time warp here. It's just a jump to the left. Hopefully on the next vi video we can go over drawing the cloak with the custom brushes and I can demonstrate applying the embroidery effect with an alpha.